Good day, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this planet of ours, beautiful Earth. And this is again AJ at Keytron bringing to you another wonderful and beautiful tutorial that has been very, very much uh, requested by most of our customers out there. Those of you who either do have the event or those of you who are longing and willing to get it, but you want to know exactly how to create your own real chords. How do you create real chords? Um, again, this is going to be a very detailed tutorial, so it means it's going to be a little bit long. And uh, for those of you who are experienced, I want to get your hands deep and deep into the Keytron event. This is for you. So before we do that, we would like to, first of all, talk about the structure. For you to understand what real chords are, live guitars, and all this terminology, we know that, unfortunately, musicians today do have to have an engineering course. So we're going to break it down to you and uh, put this in the language that musicians can understand. What exactly are real chords? So but before we do that, we're going to talk about the structure, the live arrangement, arrangement structure of the Keytron event. How are the accompaniment? How are they structured? What makes up an accompaniment or a style, right? So the basic style is made up of what? Three introductions, three endings, fills, and breaks. Each of those accompaniment parts are made up of different tracks or different channels. And let's go through them in detail, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the screen here so you can see exactly what I am talking about in terms of the structure of the Keytron uh, event styles, all right? So if we go into view, what are the accompaniments made up of? The first thing is drums over there. So each style has kind of uh, different types of drums that we're going to talk about. You, you can have real drums, which are live drums. Okay, These are audio loops that you can create either with software or having a live drummer come into your studio and perform and, and play and record them. And you can have those live drums uh, brought into the style. Okay. You also have MIDI drums, all right, which are the drum sets that are found within the event itself. And you also have grooves. You also have three grooves, groove one, groove two, and groove three, okay? If you go over to the bass track, the bass has two types of bass. You have MIDI bass, which is your bass, which is created when uh, using the sounds that are within the instrument itself, okay? Using the actual sounds that are within the uh the sound uh, set of the instrument itself. And you also have what we call real bass. And real bass is samples, okay, or loops that are created by actual bass players who are actually playing the bass uh, in the different keys. And then the machine is able to reproduce that. And I'm going to talk about that in another video as well. Then you come into chords, which gets very, very interesting, okay? So you actually have five MIDI chords chord one, chord two, chord three, chord four, and chord five. And these chords are made up of either the actual MIDI element of the style itself. So when you create a style, you record chord one, chord two, three, and four, and five. And when the instrument takes that information, it can then transpose that based on the keys that you play on the instrument. Now, any and all arrangers can do that. But this is where the event steps up, steps up the game. You also have what we call modeling, which is a capability to use existing style parts or existing loops within the instrument and that is done by simply touching and holding your chord for an example if i touch and hold right here on chord two you can see right there it gives me this screen where i can either have piano different chord types based on the family here for piano and for guitar and for orchestral right so i can go into ensemble for an example and i can pick a particular instrument that i want to use for that particular chord that I, I went into right there, which was chord number two, all right? So you do have five MIDI chords, again, for each of the accompaniment parts. And then you have the live guitar. So the live guitar is located over here. And the live guitar, again, and these are audio live guitars that were performed by professional musicians. And these are those that were performed by Keytron or by the programmers who work for the company, third-party programmers who work for the company. And these go in this location here. These are live guitars, live audio loops that you can create, uh, that the company or those that have permission can create and use with, within the keyboard. Then you also have what they call long chord. And the long chord are just long guitar strums that you can hear within some of the styles, right? Again, like a one-time strum either at the beginning or the end, and it's kind of sustained. Again, it's audio, okay? And now the part of consent, the part of the part that interests us today is the real chord, which is this one right here. 
right? So the real chord can be made up of anything. It could be strings, it could be your set of user live guitars, and these again are either factory or user. So the factory has a whole list of live chords in there. If you have the unit with the AJAM Sonic package, you even have additional live chords as well inside that particular package. And then of course, you also have the capability as a uh, user to be able to create your own live chord. So the question of the day is, how do you create live chord? How do you create live chords? I'm going to take you step by step uh, to teach you how to create live chords. So the first thing you have to understand is the structure of the live chord, right? Exactly how does this work? So imagine this, you're actually playing the arranger and you're playing different chords on the keyboard. And for each chord that you play on the keyboard, you have to create a live chord or live uh, phrase or live loop that's going to respond or correspond to that. Now we do say here in this case you can create live guitars but it's not limited to guitars. It could be strings, it could be also a mix. You could have a saxophone or a guitar player, anything, even a dog or a cat barking or meowing, right? And you can record that and you can have that respond to a particular chord as you perform. So we're going to go through and create an example from scratch, right? So I'm going to go ahead and grab my guitar and I'm going to explain this to you as we go ahead, okay? So before I do that, let's finish here. We went into chords and we showed you the live chord uh, 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 set, setting over there. The next thing you can do is you also have three additional tracks which are lower. Lower one, lower two, and lower three. These are voices that are played to the left of the split point, okay? Together with the style. So you can have up to three voices. These are actually manual because they're not really tied to the style. Yes, the style can save those voices, but the actual performance of those voices is based on how you play your chords. These are actually what you hear when you play the instrument live and you have the chords set up here, okay? And there are a bunch of things you can do with those. If you go to settings, for example, you can determine when those chords are heard, in what circumstances, if the machine is in stop mode, if it's in on mode, if or not you're pressing a fill, um, or if you want to just mute them all together. Each of those chords can be programmed to do uh, different things, okay? So let's go down to what we came here to do today, and that's to create and how to how to create uh, live chords for this instrument. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a guitar, all right? So the first thing you want to do, of course, is to be able to record in 13 or more different keys, right? And I'm going to display that at the end of this video, the different chord types that the instrument does uh, require. Also, you have to understand that this has to be done in a 16-bit format and 441000 hertz of uh, frequency, okay? So I'm gonna go to a screen here where you can see my, uh, you can see my DAW, and I'm using Audition right now. Of course, other people can use Pro Tools, whatever that you want to use to be able to uh, do the recording. Let me show you an example of what my studio here looks like so you can see what I am seeing, okay? So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to go over here, okay, that is my, software over there, all right? And I'm gonna go ahead and start to record a particular phrase. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna record in the key of C, okay? I'm gonna record, in other words, when I play the C chord on my instrument, what do I wanna hear from my live instrument? In this case, the live instrument is the guitar, okay? So let's go ahead and record uh, this particular pattern for us, just in C. And I'm just gonna keep this short, I'm gonna only do eight bars per each one, okay? I don't want to go through entirely everything. So here we go. Okay, so as you can see, I went ahead and recorded my first... Uh, wave, okay, in the key of uh, C, all right? So in other words, when I play C on the instrument, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear that particular strum right there, all right? So now you're gonna go ahead and edit this, all right? So you wanna make it, make sure that you do it such that you, you, you cut it out correctly, you know, where it starts and where it ends. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna see how this works in my particular scenario.
All right, now one or two mistakes over there, but I'm going to go ahead and clean that up real quick, and then I'm going to save this, all right? So again, I'm going to show you at the end of this video uh, the different names to save this. So we're going to save this as a major underscore C dot wave, okay? So this is going to be just the live chord that we're going to hear when we play the C chord. Now you're going to repeat the same thing. You're going to record in the key of F. You're going to record G, A, B. You're going to record in the minors, in the majors, the sevens. You're going to record, and all that's going to be at the end of the video. So you can see exactly uh, what is done, okay? So now that you've done this, what do you do? You're going to save this in a folder, okay? And that folder, in this particular case, I'm working on this style, which is Zook Love. So I'm going to save this as a Zook uh, live guitar okay so I'm going to create a folder in my machine or on my desktop okay from this and I'm going to put all the wave files that correspond to this particular pattern in other words this particular rhythm you're hearing right now and I'm going to call this zook underscore a and underscore the tempo the BPM at which I recorded this particular uh, guitar okay now mind you i'm saying zook underscore a so zook is for the kind of style in your case it could be pop it could be reggae it could be salsa and i'm put, i'm putting an a there because i'm going to have a variety of different strum patterns right in this first case i did what i just did maybe i may have a different pattern okay and i'm going to call that zook b and in that wave in that folder i'm going to put all the different patterns in all the different keys so it does get to be a lot of work and i want you also to appreciate the work that has been done already by keytron and by ajam sonic and other par parties out there to create these lifestyles i think this tutorial doesn't just walk you through it but also allows you to appreciate the work that's been put in to create a lifestyle and this is just for the chord part for this particular chord part okay so now that we're done with our recording and have all those files, how do we get that particular folder into the event? First of all, like we said before, you have recorded all the different chord parts, A, B, C, D, E, F, A minor, B minor, seventh, diminished, and what have you. And you put those into a folder. And we're gonna show you here how we did on our end, okay? So we're gonna switch the screen here real quick so you can see what it looks like. So this is what my computer looks like right now. And what I'm going to show you here is the uh, screen, the folder. So I have four folders here. And I'm going to explain to you my naming uh, formats and why I chose to use this particular format, right? So if you look at the first one here, it says Zook, like I said before, Zook A. So the first rhythmic pattern I have under uh, Zook A, and that's a tempo 90, okay? If I open this folder now, you're going to see all the relevant files right and these are all the files that we discussed before uh, the naming of these files and how you actually go ahead and uh, have these files in that particular folder so you can see for example how to name the different uh, the different files sixth seventh eighth argumented c the one i just did uh, which i was showing you on the uh, video was actually major c which is going to be right there right so if i click on this file you're going to hear it all right so, of course, that's how it sounds like all cleaned up and all polished up, okay? So you have all your files in here and you put them in this particular folder. So in this case, I have Zook A90. I have another one here called Zook A, okay, with FX. So what we did in the studio is using the digital mixing board, we actually have those guitars, but we apply the effects professionally on the guitar itself. So if you go here, it's going to be the same files as before, but in this case, we actually had effects which are built into that particular uh, one. So we want to give the customers a choice to either get a clean guitar, right, or to have the guitar with effect. And B, of course, is a different pattern, okay? So if I click here, go to uh, Zook B90, just to give you an idea. Again, the same naming, same standard. But if you notice here, we have a different rhythm. Let me play the C uh, major again here so you can hear what it sounds like and what the difference is, again, with the patterns and why we're giving them different names, okay? So here it is. So in this case, we had a different strum, different. Again, all of these are the similar pattern, but we called it... Uh, the Zook B folder because the pattern has changed slightly from the first one, okay? And the same, you can go to A, you can go to B, C, and D. I'm just going to use these for example. So, the folder structure is as discussed and as we showed you right there, okay? They are having the name, and I'm going to show you now on the keyboard how that 
looks like. So if I go into the keyboard here, and we're gonna use this particular example. See, uh, if I go here to view, all right, once I've copied that into the keyboard, I'm gonna copy that into the event. I'm gonna go into the more user modeling. I'm going to go into real chord. And that's where I have all my folders. If I go in and zoom in on the screen, you're gonna see right there, okay? So these are all the same folders I showed you on my computer, and they are here. Zook A is right there in that folder. And if you enter there, there are all the files we just discussed. All of the files are there, okay? The same files. So once you have these in the event, you want to, of course, update the table, all right, by pressing the arranger C and D and enter simultaneously. So in other words, you're going to press these two and that to update the table. Or you can just restart the machine and that updates everything into the event. So now let's go to the more interesting part. We've shown you how to create and how to load these into the event. Now, how do you use these, right? How are you going to use this uh, uh, Zook Live Guitars? For the sake of an example, I'm going to use a factory style here called Ragatone underscore two, which all of you that have events, you do have access to this particular style. And I'm using that as an example because you know how this style already sounds on your keyboard. You're going to see the difference it's going to make by having this guitar in that particular style, okay? So, how do you use this in an existing style, in either a factory style or a user style? So, first of all, you select the style like we've just done. And I'm going to go into View and Modeling, okay? So, this is a factory style like I said before. You see right there, Ragatone 92, that's the live drum that's being used. If I press the Start button right now, So let's listen to that ragatone style. How does this style sound like the way it is right now in the event, like this? So how do I bring in those live guitars? How do I bring in the guitars I just created or the live real chords, the real chords? In this case, I use a guitar, but how do I bring in those real chords? It's very simple. All I have to do is press touch chord, the chord icon on the screen. And remember, I spoke about the real chord. So in this particular style, you can see it has dashes because it doesn't have a real chord associated with it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch that real chord icon. And it brings all the factory real chords, okay? So in this case, for an example, if I touch ballad 102A and I start playing this, I can hear I can hear the factory live chord, okay? Now where are mine? If I touch user, okay, you now see that it gives you this screen. And remember the folders that we showed you in the previous screen, those folders, they are right here. So the folders we had on the computer, which we've copied into the live modeling real chord folder of the event, they are all displayed here exactly as you named them. So we're gonna now go in our case and we're gonna to touch Zook A. You get the hourglass for a couple of seconds and that live guitar is now ready to be played with this style with the variation that you're in right now, okay? Because we have single on here. If I touch this and I put global, then I touch Zook A, it means that this particular live guitar is gonna be used on all the variations, variation A, B, C, and D. But for my example right now, I want it to be just used on variation A, okay? So now listen to the style. Very simple. Now, remember, we just did that for variation A. Now for variation B, I'm gonna use the Zook B, which was another pattern that we selected, okay? Now listen to how it's going to sound in variation B. Back to variation A. So 
So now in variation C, I can pick another pattern again. Oh, maybe for this particular case, I want to get out of user. I want to go back to the factory and I want to use something else. I'm going to turn the wheel here or I can use the new page buttons and I can go to something else. Okay. Let's say I want to try and use, um, let's see, I want to use that little, uh, another one here, country, let's just say, okay, this is getting very, very interesting indeed. All right. I want to use a country 180, all right. So listen to that live guitar in variation C. Okay, and let's get more creative. In variation D, I want to go back into my user real chord and I want to use, let's say, Zook C right there. Okay, so now, how does this style sound? Remember, all I'm doing right now is using the modeling, all right? using the modeling feature in the style. So now it's going to sound like this. If I go to variation A. Now remember, if I get out of here now and get back to my regular screen, I can change that volume as needed, okay? So if I go to the volume, I can adjust the volume of that live guitar. So it'll sound like this. Variation B. Make it a little bit louder. Variation C. Version D. Now, remember in my case that I showed you before, the fact that you have the capability of having the actual clean audio and then also having the audio with the effects as it was done in the studio? Well, guess what? If I go back here to my screen, okay, and I'm going to show you this real quick and you'll see why I did that. Because now I can go in and I can select that guitar Zook A90, and I can select the other one instead, Zook A90 with effects. That has the effect built into the wave, okay? That's done professionally in the studio. Now, if I go back to the raw clean sample, which is just Zook A90, Remember, it's not all and all here. I can still go back in here and I can still go to settings, okay? And I can go here and figure out that, uh, okay. I can go in here, okay, go back into Zook A and I can use the effects found inside the event. So I'm not going to use the effect that was built into the particular uh, audio files that were used here. I want to use a clean sample in Zook 90, but I want to go in and I want to use the effects of the event. And so when I press the effect over there, I can see where it says real chord effects. Right now it's bypassed. I can actually go in and I can select built in effects to apply to that live chord. There are many, many, many effects I can choose from. Just to give you an example, I'm going to go into, let's say, Wawa, for example, or even a delay, so you can actually hear it, okay? And when I play this, you can hear some sort of a delay in there. And I can now activate the delay here, and I can even add more and control that in real time, okay? So there's so much you can do with this. So now, if I try to play this, let's listen to how this is going to sound with my live guitar. And here we go.
Now, don't mind if you saw some interesting stuff on the screen that's coming up in the new release uh, to be released uh, shortly. But you can see the power of the live uh, real chords, being able to use that in an existing style or being able to use that in your custom styles as well. Okay, so that pretty much gives you in a nutshell uh, how you actually create uh, real chords, how you bring them into the event, and most importantly, how you actually use and play these alive chords. Again, the power is up to you. It's all about creativity. And remember, like I said before, you can actually use mix audio tracks. You don't, you're not stuck to just recording one instrument. You can have a dog barking. You can have chords from another instrument, your VSTs, what have you. Mix them up. But you have to do them in every single key as we've displayed on the screen as well. So have a beautiful weekend and uh, see you all again very, very soon. Talk about live bass, talk about real chords, real guitars coming up shortly. Ciao.